Hi friends, I welcome you back to this lecture series on aircraft performance. So in the last lecture, we understood uh, the various parameters in aircraft performance like the rate of climb, the angle of climb and both the extreme cases, maximum angle of climb and the corresponding velocity at which the aircraft should fly so that the angle of climb should be maximum as well as the rate of climb analysis where we understood what are the conditions uh, for velocity corresponding to the maximum rate of climb as well as the corresponding angle of climb. So once we understood uh, the climbing performance, we will move on to a more interesting performance parameter called as the gliding front. So why I say a more interesting uh, performance parameter than you know climbing flight is because the gliding flight, the assumption is engine is powered off. So you imagine yourself in an aircraft where it's both the engines are not working. So what do you feel? What is the rush? So is the airplane going to crash or are you going to land safely? So these questions we are going to answer in this lecture. So I hope uh, you are thorough with the previous concepts. If not, you can use the I button here to go to the previous lecture and watch it and come back. Right? So let's begin. So let's consider an aircraft in this particular mode where it is uh, going downwards or in aerodynamic terms we call it as gliding. So this is the flight path and the lift is always perpendicular to the free stream velocity. So free stream velocity is nothing but in the opposite direction of that of the flight path. And drag is always acting in the opposite direction of the flight path. And weight, of course, is always acting towards the center of the earth, right? So if I resolve the forces along the free stream velocity and perpendicular to the flight path, so I'm going to get drag is equal to W cos theta and lift is equal to W sine theta. Interesting enough, and if you compare it with the steady level flight, where the lift was equal to weight, and the drag was equal to the thrust. But in this gliding flight, there is no thrust force. Or in other words, the engines are switched off. Right? So, if engines are switched off, then who is taking care of the weight and the drag? Right? So, because the engines are switched off, we got the drag value which is equal to the sine of angle theta, that is the angle of glide, multiplied by weight of the aircraft. Right? So drag force still exists. So it doesn't mean that because thrust is not there, drag won't be there. No. Because the flight path exists, drag exists. Right? So, and also if you observe, the quantity of lift has been reduced from steady level flight, where it was just a W, the weight of the aircraft. Now it has been changed to W cos theta. Now if I divide the expressions, uh, sin theta by cos theta, I get the value as 1 by L by D. LHS is nothing but tan theta. So let's call this as equation number 1. So now let's try to understand the implication of this particular equation that is tan theta is equal to the reciprocal of lift to drag ratio. So if I need to calculate the minimum glide angle or also called as the shallowest angle of glide, the L by D ratio should be maximum. Right? So if on the RHS the L by D uh, ratio is maximum, so the angle of glide would be minimum value. Right? So the glide angle is strictly a function of lift to drag ratio. But L by D itself depends on velocity. See there is no direct relationship between the angle of glide and the velocity of the aircraft itself. but the L by D ratio is defined by the velocity of the aircraft, right? 
hence higher the l by d ratio lower will be the angle of glide now the smallest equilibrium angle occurs at l by d max which also corresponds to the maximum range so we'll be uh, discussing what is range and what is endurance so before we move to that concept first understand this the minimum angle of glide occurs at l by d max now let's try to understand what is the range covered during the glide so what do you mean by range the distance traveled by the aircraft the moment engines are switched off until it reaches the ground it touches the ground right so for that for the same uh, diagram let's define the horizontal distance covered by the aircraft as r that is the range and the vertical uh, altitude lost by the aircraft let's call that as h it is also same as the altitude at which the aircraft starts to glide right and theta of course is the angle of glide so if i write it in trigonometric uh, relation tan theta i can write it as the ratio of h by r and if i resolve it for uh, the range r i get it as h by tan theta then tan theta from the previous expression that is equation 1 i can write it as 1 by lift to drag ratio and if this i take it to the numerator it will become h into l by d now again an interesting concept to get the maximum value of range again the aircraft should fly at l by d max right so here two conditions l by d max is achieving one is the minimum angle of glide another is maximum range now it is obvious because if the aircraft is gliding at minimum angle that means it is going to cover maximum range so if you want to understand this more clearly imagine what happens if this theta goes to 90 degrees right the aircraft simply dives nose first so what is the range covered zero getting the point which means the l by d ratio is zero altitude is there h exists but l by d is zero which means there is no lift generated clear it's a very ideal case very vague condition it won't actually happen but a scenario i used to explain what is the importance of l by d the moment l by d comes into picture range starts to vary now we get maximum range when the l by d ratio is maximum clear next we will try to understand something called as equilibrium glide velocity right so it is the velocity corresponding to the angle of glide so at what velocity the aircraft is going to uh, follow its path once the engines are switched off now in order to calculate that velocity let's consider the lift expression so lift i can uh, comfortably write as half rho v square s into cl and also for gliding flight that is equal to w cos theta and if i resolve it for v infinity square and later on to v infinity i'm going to get under root of 2w cos theta divided by rho s into cl coefficient of lift now here i would like to highlight a very important relation or the ratio w by s this w by s is called the wing loading we have already discussed in previous modules so wing loading is a very important performance parameter which is going to decide whether it is range whether it is endurance or gliding or even climbing parameters understood so let's see let's do few observations for this particular expression and call it as equation number 4 the first observation is because the density parameter is there so it depends on the altitude the velocity parameter depends on density which means as the altitude changes velocity increases right or decreases now if 
an object is thrown from certain height that object gains the velocity until it reaches the ground that is what physics explains right and it is right because the earth tries to pull all the objects towards itself including us but the interesting factor here is in this particular equation the density is inversely proportional to velocity understood it means that as the altitude reduces density increases right we have seen in the atmosphere chapter or the vice versa as the altitude increases density decreases or in this case as the altitude decreases density increases but at the same time if density increases the velocity of the aircraft is going to decrease you understood the concept of free falling as compared to the concept of free falling of an aircraft what is the difference between these two if i just leave a spear at some height it is going to gain velocity until it touches the ground whereas if i leave an airplane at the same altitude it is going to lose velocity until it reaches ground interesting concept right so the difference is for an aircraft lift exists whereas for an object like spear lift doesn't only the drag exists getting the point understood so we will also see how much the lift is going to vary if i consider the variation in density right we will uh, try to understand that with an example at later stages now the second observation is the coefficient of lift value that is cl depends on the ratio of l by d right it doesn't exist independently it depends on l by d themselves right if lift to drag ratio is held constant throughout the flight path that is uh, in gliding then the coefficient of lift is constant throughout the glide path right hence not affecting the velocity much right and as we discussed velocity decreases with decrease in altitude which means as the aircraft flies or glides from higher altitude as it reaches lower altitudes its velocity is going to reduce unlike free falling object you understood the reason the reason is the aircraft has got wings which in turn generates lift now let's try to derive an expression for velocity which corresponds to the minimum angle of glide right so when i say minimum angle of glide it means that the value of cos theta is approximately equal to 1 right that is when the angle is less right and always whenever you take the angle of attack whether it is theta alpha whatever it is you please consider it in radians rather than in degree you should know the conversion of course but i would suggest you in performance analysis or even in stability analysis it is better to consider angles in radians right that would help uh, much better when you solve complex problems rather than getting a wrong answer right and also the condition for l by d max is kcl square is equal to cd not what is how we got this we got this from the polar equation drag polar equation cd is equal to cd not plus kcl square cd is the total drag coefficient cd not is the parasite drag coefficient and kcl square is the induced drag coefficient or lift dependent drag coefficient so from there for maximum l by d ratio we got the condition as kcl square is equal to cd not now from this expression if i resolve it for coefficient of lift it will become under root of cd not by k so i substitute this value in the above expression that is equation number 
and I get the velocity corresponding to L by D max as under root of 2 by rho again under root of k by c d naught into w by s. Let's call this as equation number 6. Now we got an expression which relates the velocity and the k value that is the lift dependent coefficient and the parasite drag coefficient itself. Right? So let's try to understand this in a much better way with the help of a numerical. Consider CPU on aircraft whose L by D max is 13.6. The L by D ratio maximum value is given. Also the power of glide starts at 10,000 feet. The altitude at which the gliding starts that is also given. So here we have to calculate the maximum glide angle, maximum range and equilibrium glide velocity at 10,000 feet and 2,000 feet. So it's a very simple problem. I want you to pause the video right now and try to solve this problem. Let's try to understand the solution. So for minimum glide angle, I have the expression tan theta minimum is equal to 1 by L by D max. So L by D max ratio is known. I am simply going to substitute the value and get the value for angle of glide minimum as 4.2 degrees or 21 degrees to be specific. Right? So what does this tell? The given aircraft that is the CP1 aircraft is capable of gliding at a minimum angle of 4.2 degrees to the horizontal. Understood? Beyond which it can't. Means the CP1 aircraft cannot glide at an angle of 3 degrees, 2 degrees, 1 degree, not possible. The minimum possible angle of glide is 4.21 degree. If, understand this, if the aircraft is flying at L by D max. Now who will decide the aircraft is flying at L by D max or not? Right? We will try to understand that concept. Now the second parameter we have to calculate is the maximum range. If I recall the expression for maximum range is nothing but the altitude at which the aircraft starts to glide multiplied by L by D max. Again uh, the h is known, here I have taken it in SI units, I have converted feet to meter. Then L by D max value of course is known. So the maximum range the aircraft can travel with its engine off if it flies at minimum glide angle would be 41.47 kilometers interesting right so even if both the engines are not working the maximum range it can cover is 41.47 kilometers right now moving on to the third parameter that is the equilibrium glide velocity at two altitudes one at 10,000 feet another at 2,000 feet right so why we have to calculate these two uh, velocities is because to understand how the velocity is varying with this particular uh, gliding front let's uh, recall the expression for equilibrium glide velocity that is under root of 2 cos theta divided by rho into cl multiplied by the wing loading. So from previous expression, we know all the values. We know the weight of the aircraft. We know the planform area of the wings. Also, we know the coefficient of lift and also the density. So this density value, I calculated with the help of the International Standard Atmosphere uh, formulas used for troposphere. These are pretty straightforward expressions that we finished in first module. So. If you want to understand the given data, please check the video here. So if I substitute all the values for 10,000 feet, I get the value of velocity as 53.13 meter per second. British units, it is 174.3 feet per second. Right. So let's try to understand how the aircraft behaves when it reaches 2,000 feet altitude. When it reaches 2000 feet altitude, for the same coefficient of lift, the only thing that varies is the density. 
the density increases as the altitude decreases so that density value i got it as 1.159 kg per meter cube so all these values are in si units so for this i got the velocity value as 46.9 meter per second right equilibrium glide velocity if i convert it into british units it is 154 feet per second i will end this lecture here please revise all the concepts before moving on to the next lecture thank you very much